What's going on, y'all? This is episode nine of Feel Free Conversations. Bless you. Bless Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I am Mike Brown of The Art of Letting Go, here with James, that yoga dude, Woods of Feel Free to Feel Free. I changed and, um, my name. Oh, what's the new name? James Feel Free. Okay. Here with James, feel free. How you feeling today? Feeling good. Man. Feeling in a good flow today. Yeah. How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. My allergies are a little messed up this morning. Uh, I slept with the fan on because it was hot last night. So really? I'm a little, a little congested. But other than that, feeling good. Um Honestly, this this week I felt like I hit a low, so now I'm like coming back up after hitting the bottom. What'd you find at the bottom? Uh, that I was distracted. Mm. Oh, by uh, jobs and stuff. Yeah, worried about the wrong things. Worried yeah. about the wrong things. Um, you know, all this shit gonna move how it's supposed to move, and I gotta really just take care of myself. And uh, I know how valuable my creativity is to me, and I wasn't I wasn't nurturing myself in that way. So, you know, I had to I had to take a pause. Feel that. Uh, was this on RoboCop? The wrong things. The wrong things. <laughs> I was about to sing it. <laughs> um, that's dope that you on your way up and stuff. Uh, I had a. I felt like I was getting low yesterday, and I asked you what you found at the bottom because it just automatically made me think of. Remember being a kid and having them pool toys. You throw the, the toy in the bottom of the pool and you go down. We was we suburb black kids, so we know how to swim. <laughs> Um, y'all had a pool growing up. Hell no. Nah. Oh, we had community pool, but community uh, pool. It was like not not at the house. Yeah. When I was Shit. younger, we had one. My whole family learned how to swim because of me, because like nobody knew how to swim. But I was, I was hanging with you know kids in the neighborhood learning how to swim. So my parents was like they had to learn in case they had to save me. That's really dope. That's really dope. Um. <laughs> Everybody except my dad. <laughs> I'm gonna put my dad on blast so he, he retired now. He can go learn how to swim. <laughs> but yeah, when you throw the little weights at the bottom of the pool and you go down there and get them, and, yeah. You know, sometimes you feel that pressure change, and then you go down there and you you grab that weight or you don't and you come up. And I don't know. It just made me think about that. But that's what's up. You on the up, man. Yeah, and I think I'm always reminded, like when I'm when I'm in it, to pull myself out because it's like, all right, we didn't been here again and again and again. You know, my response time I think is just getting faster. Like instead of it taking a month or a week or a day, it may take a couple of hours. You know, and 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 I'm sure that changes. You know, mm-hmm. day by day, but I feel like the awareness is what what helps in shifting that. Some bottoms be deeper than others. Yep. Yeah, I felt like I had a bottom yesterday, too, because uh, doing what I love doing, but I feel like I haven't. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just want to use the new effects. Uh, yeah, doing what I love doing, but I don't feel like I've elevated how I do it. I still feel like it's mm. moving. I feel like it's moving slow. I feel like I'm doing the same thing in the same way. When I look back back at it, you know, I can see my progression, but in it, it's like, uh, I don't feel like I'm progressing. And I want to. So I kind of hit a low yesterday. And then uh, I took some time to, you know, do that surrender thing and kind of let go of some stuff, some expectations and things and kind of really stay in the mindset of I got to let go of um, just 
what what need to be happening, what's going on, everything, and and really uh, just jump into just the flow. Okay, what's what's in front of me? What's here right now? How can we move forward? How can we progress? And it, it definitely brought me out of it. Um, at the bottom, I found a lot of snacks, <laughs> just <eating laughs> snacks and stuff, and uh, um, and a lot of social media scrolling and snacks. So, social media been coming up for me, so I don't know if I said it last episode, but I'm not drinking, not smoking, not eating candy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of like a sobriety for me. And, um, yeah, I find myself and I, and I took a week off from reading, I took a week off from reading and I found myself on YouTube, just scrolling through, shorts. scrolling through the shorts. Yep. That stuff and I don't, awful, I, I don't even do that shit on like Instagram and shit. I don't sit up and look at reels all day on TikTok or any of that shit, but something about YouTube, it just got me. It sucked me in. Yeah, and I feel it, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm at a place. I don't know, man. I ain't never done no hard drugs, but whenever I think about people doing hard drugs, it'd be like, man, why are you smoking crack, doing coke, like you on the street doing heroin, meth, or something? Like you on the street, but it be feeling like it. Like I know I don't need to be doing this right now, but I'm doing this right now. Hey, man, I really feel like the work that I've been doing this year has been just bringing my awareness to like me, my habits. Like I said, every, every time I would stop something, I would notice myself finding a substitute for that. And, uh, now feeling like I need to find, like I'm a substitute regardless. Obviously that's what it feels like. So it's like, let me find those healthy substitutes, you know? Yeah. And being in a relationship has helped me to notice my addiction to negative thinking. And even mm. being around positive, moving forward things, I have an addiction to thinking about how it's not going to work out, how things are going to fall through, how things are going to not happen. Oh, man, that ain't going to work. And it's, you know, like the little silent voice in my head. And that that is a, that that is a real that is an Instagram uh, YouTube short that goes to my head of all the things that can't work. Why it ain't going to work and going through those, man. And. Um, that's something that I really, really am still working on to let go because those are the things that bring me down. Um, yeah, going through those reels, and I was my little cousin talking to him. I be calling him a hater because he goes straight into the negativity mode. I said, "Hey, man, I'm about to get a restaurant and stuff." James, you can't cook. <laughs> little, <laughs> little true, but I'm like. <laughs> I can, I can put some food together. You know, I can make a salad real good. But I'm like, man, listen to the whole plan before you hate on something, before you start going negative. And I know I probably learned that kind of thinking, too, as a young kid, like, and even getting older, like, something don't work out for me. Shoot, how's it going to work out for somebody else? And going negative. And that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, you know, a lot of times people place their limitations on you. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and so I'm like, I'm trying to be very, very careful about knocking somebody else's flow because I lost my own. Bless you, bless Thank you, bless you, bless you. Because yeah, you know, I know what it's like to be on the other side of that of feeling somebody telling you something negative. You all hyped up and excited about something, and somebody just drops some negativity. And criticism without solution and just and just be feeling mean and then you become mean to yourself and like you said start just scrolling through those negative thoughts and just get stuck there so but you know what i was gonna ask you how do you avoid that because for me i think i've learned over time that when i'm working on something when i'm nurturing an idea i can't share it with everybody immediately Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's something that just pops in my head, like I can't share with everybody till, till I'm believing in it. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't need anybody else's shit on my dream. So yeah, man, I I've been learning one, who to share shit with and, uh, two, when to share it. 
Yeah, man. And really me understanding that everything is energy has kind of helped them. I'm still playing around with that kind of mentally in my mind of like, this idea is energy that is coming to my mind. If it stop here because I stopped the flow, that's on me, but it's going to keep going. Like, so if somebody tell me something, I stop the energy. I, I If I want to do it, I got to find a way to keep it flowing. Yeah. You know, so if it's, it's not no super sophisticated problem, it's not no thing that's bigger than me. This is a piece of energy that came to me. I'm either going to let it flow out or I'm going to block it or whatever, but it's, it's still going to be there. And so it's like, okay, somebody, if it's, if it's, if I feel like the energy is stop is blocked, what other channels of energy can I have it flow through or how else can I, you know, make this energy flow in a, in a, in a way that I want it to go. Um, but yeah, man, that stuff about everything is energy and all that. I'm getting that and understanding that more. That's that LA shit. hundred percent. hundred percent. So it's the more I understand and I'm aware of my energy, um, and how I operate, the more I can understand, okay, my idea is energy, somebody else's idea is energy, how can we get this to flow? And speaking of letting energy flow, let's get into a meditation, man. That sounds good. All right. Oh, good, 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 good. Wherever you feel like anything is tense, tight, stuck unfocused, unclear, restricted, bonded. I want you to breathe into it. Whether it's an area in your heart, tightness in your shoulders, your mind, your face, breathe into it and that energy flow. We're just gonna take three deep inhales. Allowing, releasing, letting go, letting flow. On the count of three, you start. Relax your jaw. Relax your back. One, two, three. Let's inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Ah. I appreciate that. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. And I appreciate um, you. Uh, what were you gonna say? No, I appreciate you saying that's that LA shit because it, it, that I think. In my mind even thinking that stuff makes me scared of that. Like, oh man, that's that weirdo. That's the stuff. But it's like, if it's real to me, it's real to me. And and that's me joking about it, yeah. calling it some LA yeah. shit because I subscribe yeah. to the shit. Cause I was just exactly. gonna say, speaking of energy, um, if you notice this shirt I have on right now, it says healing in real time. Yeah. And every that time I too. wear this shirt, I feel, you know, myself doing the work. And I was gonna ask you, because I know you do have one, how does the shirt make you feel when you wear it? It's orange and I'm not a bright, I got the orange version and I'm, I'm, I haven't been a bright color person, uh, but it does make me feel like I am a little bit out of my more reserved behavior and stuff. So, and that's a part of my healing because I, I played small for a long time, but it feels hard to play small in a big old bright orange shirt. That's a healing in real time. So, uh, wearing bright colors. Wearing clothes is comfortable to me. Wearing statements that I believe in, like healing in real time, is definitely a part of my process of letting things go and you know, feeling free. So it, it's it's a powerful piece for me to wear. Um, I need to put it on. I you know I usually wear my that yoga dude stuff, and it's it's still it's kind of muted, you know, as in black and white, dark green browns um i bought some clothes for for this job and i I made sure to buy some color and some 
some uh, just ornament, yeah. <laughs> things that are kind of ornamental and stuff to really express what's going on inside. Like I be, you know, I work in schools a lot and you see a lot of the kids wearing the same colors, black, gray, brown. I'm like, it's not even a continuation school or a uniform. Y'all are choosing to wear these muted down colors to fit in. And then, you know, y'all don't even realize y'all all wearing the same colors. Um, I'm grateful that we came up in a time where colors was coming in. Hell like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get uh, you get you some six color bapes, you right. know? Some, <laughs> some patent leather Nike Air Force right. Ones. Right. All that stuff, you know? Yeah, even the, you know, like I said, streetwear mixing with art and stuff. And I have no street in me, but I haven't been really in my art and my expression because I ain't been letting it flow. So, yeah, man, pieces like that that you're wearing um, definitely help to let it flow. And especially during March Madness when it's flowing for an amazing price. Yeah, man. So <laughs> you guys can get this shirt and other shirts. Um, we released an artist series. So, you know, whatever your art is and you need some inspiration, you can go to yanniblue.etsy.com and grab yourself a shirt. All shirts are $30 this month. Uh, my favorite piece that's on there right now is a shirt that says, my price is my price. Just a reminder, you know, when you when you forget what your price is or you feeling desperate or scared to tell somebody what you're worth, wear that shirt. See how it makes you feel. Um, we got a podcaster shirt on there that I wore while making some decisions and, you know, being in that space of scarcity and scared to tell people what my price is. And I wore that shirt and sent the email with so much confidence. And, you know, I was told that I was too expensive, but I felt good knowing that I expressed what I was worth and didn't settle. So head over to yanniblue.etsy.com and, uh, yeah, get those reminders, those those reminder pieces for yourself while you're doing some work. That's dope, man. It's like you're wearing excerpts from your journal on you, man. That's, that's important, man, to remind yourself this is who I am. Yeah, I definitely I need to get that. My price is my price one. Uh, my my price got rejected like yesterday for a price and it felt good to follow up with a hey man no worries we'll come back around ooh, ooh. or not yeah you know but hey here goes here's still here go some resources here go some things that you can work with and stuff but i can't i can't give you i can't give you the gold for the bronze you don't work like that how did you get to a place of just knowing your value? Because, um, you know, I think about myself as an artist and most artists are usually, you know, when you first starting out, you just want to be heard. You know, you want to, you know, I guess in the yoga world, you want to be experienced. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you just want to, you want to get your voice out in whatever way you communicate. And, um, sometimes we do settle for less than we were. Sometimes we will take the free for the, for the opportunity or take the low for whatever, you know, whatever reasoning we give ourselves to, to devalue ourselves. But how did you get to a place of not devaluing yourself? I'm still working on it, but I saw a uh, Escalade yesterday and I want one. Um, <laughs> I saw, you know, a house, you know, I saw how much the mortgage is and um, it doesn't make sense anymore to just kind of take what I can get and everything, especially when I see the impact that I'm having on people. When I have teachers mm. coming up to me, oh, man, this is great. Thank you so much. When I have students coming up to me, when I'm looking out on the whole audience and I see people actually going inside. I see people actually doing the work that they haven't done and getting the releases that they need to continue to help the people that they serve. So it's like, oh, like I see the value. I see the change. I see the impact that I have in 
and then I see the things that I want and I can't have that impact in my own life. It just, it don't make sense. Um, it just, it don't make sense. So I can't do that to myself. I appreciate you sharing that. Cause I've, I've had three people this week tell me how much I've inspired them. And, you know, I, I, I wasn't really tapped into receiving that at the time because I was so caught up in my own shit, but being up out of that and reflecting on it's like, damn, like I am doing a lot of really dope work. Now, how do I make this shit work for me? And it is working for me, but at the same time, like really tapping into that energy. I, <laughs> we need an energy button. <laughs> <laughs> energy. Energy. <laughs> Strong <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Uh yeah, man. I think and I say escalate, I say mortgage, but really my vision is like, hey, this is the vision that you have for yourself. It on the line for what you're doing for yourself right now. So you just gonna stay stuck in this place of wanting, desiring, and lacking and everything like that when it's a it really is a, a world of abundance. You can ask for what you want. You can have it what you want. You know, just make the offer. Give somebody the opportunity to give you what you want. And if, you know, and you know you deserve it. So make it happen, man. So I had to write, you know, I wrote up an invoice for somebody the other day and I still I undercut myself. And it's just like, I can't keep doing this. Um, and I thought about, okay, maybe I should have somebody else make my offers and my invoices for me. But ain't nobody seen me in that Escalade but me. Nobody seen me making those mortgage payments for me. I want to go to uh, Ghana for my 40th. Oh, am I invited? Close. Yeah. <laughs> Please, man. Um, <laughs> you know, go see, go see the ancestors for my 40th. So we got two years and I'm like, um, you know, we just talking about people, everybody talking about how expensive life is, especially just in general, life is expensive and stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't want a lot of my day to be uh, consumed with, man, eggs is up, tickets is up. I don't know. Like, I don't want that. I get it. It's a part of, but I don't want that. So. Let me go ahead and, and make these offers and, and put these things in place. So, um, yeah, and just just making it simple, making it simple. That's dope, man. That's dope, and I and I feel all of that. Uh, yeah, man. I got I got a challenge coming up. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while. It's it's a a month long yoga challenge, so. Uh, I'll get some more information and stuff to you about it. But, and uh, is this something that like everybody can participate in or is it just like a, a just you thing? How is that working? Everybody can participate. So I'm going to be doing yoga for a month. And you're going to get a month every day for a month. Videos with me doing some yoga. Uh, for those of y'all who beginning your yoga journey, we're going to get you right in that month. So, um, you know, look out for the link and everything to sign up for the yoga challenge. Um, and, you know, like I said in the beginning, I, I feel like my, my name is now James feel free. Mm. Um, James free, James free. Um, James free. Huh. Um, yeah, because I'm just moving to a freer space, freeing up a lot of space. Understanding that when I get up in my head, it's it usually don't go good. Let that thing flow. Let it go. So making it flow, man. You growing out your hair? I am. I'm growing it out for Lent. Um as part of my Lent. I don't, I, I don't like giving up things that I'm uh take back. So I'm like, let me take on something. So I took on growing out my hair and uh really dedicating my time to like, you know, making some time to create. So like, like I said, when I be feeling shit, it's like, let me 
let me make a beat. Let me write. Let me let me just do something that that can help me get off this energy. Let me go take some pictures out in the city or some shit just to just to release some energy. But yeah, I'm growing it out till the end of Lent. What's the longest you've grown it for? Resume tight. In my life or or adult life? Your life. In my life? Oh, maybe high school. I probably went like it was long because I had twists. Um, that's probably the longest. But in my adult life, maybe during the pandemic, because I I was sponging during the during the pandemic. Okay. Uh, when we did when we did the uh, Carnegie Hall thing, my hair was kind of long. It was a little it was a little lengthy. Yeah, so I was like, it was like six months. Shit, I probably I probably went like seven seven eight months. Yeah. Till I got tired of it, I was like, "Fuck this shit." <laughs> but, but you know what? I'm very conscious of a. Uh, see, we need that energy button because I was about to say it. I'm conscious of the energy, the energy that my hair is taking <laughs> on, and uh, I'm looking so forward to cutting this shit and releasing this shit because uh, I know it's taking on a lot of energy right now, and and I'm sending it all to it. You know? Yeah. Smell like shit. <laughs> Get you through those astrological cycles faster. <laughs> uh, retrogrades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> moon and Venus. Right. <laughs> Check your palms right now. Check them. <laughs> yeah. I've never gotten to LA hey, stuff. When you, when you said check your palms, it made me think about Snoop and Bones. Where she was like, you got a line across. Must be my phone line. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you and 10 other people are the only folks who know Bones my dad was watching The Wash last night I the first one or the old one? Oh, the car wash, the, the wash the, the, the new one <laughs> <laughs> with Mr. Wash <laughs> take your ass to the snooty fox <laughs> <laughs> who are there <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. If uh, if you had Snoop on this show, what's one question you want to ask him? Oh, oh. I would want to know what's what's the difference between Snoop and Calvin. Mm. Yeah, I think as he gets older, it those things merge together more he seems like he just be living his life and doing these things but that's a good question and you know what i would ask him too could we fucking take over ggn <laughs> let, us, let us host ggn i still i still i still want to be on ggn all right shit that was a good gangster news or something like that something like that but yeah. it was positive it was just like it was, it was fun show. it was positive like, i would love to be on ggn or host first- it Right, that was the first podcast I, I was like, I didn't know it was a podcast, but it was like, oh wow, yeah, I'm watching this. I'm looking forward to it too. Um, that and the smoke box will be real for some reason. I never really got into the smoke box. Um, you know, I I don't really get into famous people podcasts like that. I fuck with Oprah. Oprah got a dope podcast. Oh, she has a podcast? Okay. Really dope podcast. And and really all she doing is repurposing shit. That's what I love about like Oprah go do a fucking talk and then come bring that shit as a podcast. Put a couple of intros, outros on it. Kind of I mean, essentially what you do when you go to these uh these things and go speak. Mm-hmm. We were in DC and we did this, this, and this. And then kind of mm-hmm. just chop it up into some shit. Um I think Nor- you know. I think Nori's dope because oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. people that he brings on. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to listen to Joe Budden, but one is too fucking long. And um, yeah, honestly, honestly, Joe is probably the best at this shit, in my opinion. And I think he's dope because he talks to his friends. You know, like Joe mm-hmm. Joe podcast remind me of like talking to you and talking to Crenshaw and you know just having everybody just kind of shooting it. 85 South another one yeah that's funny 80, 85 South but uh 
yeah, I really don't give a fuck what celebrities have to say, to be honest with you. Um, especially because I, I've been doing this shit a lot longer than a lot of them, you know, like with music, I, I could listen to people all day because, uh, you know, I, that was a space where I was just trying to figure it out, figure it out. But in this, I found my flow. So I really don't feel like a lot of the motherfuckers do it better than me. Oh, sorry for cursing so much. Cause I know this is the feel free morning, you know, but when she got me excited, I'm gonna have to go back and add some bleeps or something, but yeah, I don't, I don't feel like any of these celebrities do it better than me. It, and Joe Button is probably the only one that I really feel like I watch and, and learn from. Cause if, if they didn't have the names that they have, and I, I just, I just think with equal resources, you know, we, we would be on the same playing field. A lot of these people, I'm just being real. That's real, man. Talk your stuff, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nah, that's good, man. And I, like I said, I, I, I need that flow of energy too. So, I love seeing you have that flow, that confidence and under, confidence and understanding. You put in the work to be able to do what you do. Mm -hmm. so, um, and and you know what? I'm getting to that place in my life where like, I don't feel in competition with nobody. Like the real competition is me. Like I'm always trying to just be, be better than myself. You know, like. When I when I do find myself like comparing myself to somebody or competing with somebody, it feel it feel like a distraction. You know what I'm saying? Like, hundred percent. I told myself this morning, like, what's for me is for me, and nothing, nobody could take that away from me. Even myself, even myself in self sabotaging. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let it flow. Let mm -hmm. it flow. Let that energy flow. Um, yeah. I'm ready to have a guest on here, man. That's dope. We have one on the 22nd. That's our first guest, but I'm definitely down to book other people. Um, you know, maybe we could get Sean in here, Byron in here. I was thinking as we've been talking, as you were saying, uh, James Free, I would love to talk to Femi on here and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really just soak up some game and also, you know, just pour back into him because, uh, that's somebody that has supported me super still to this day in my journey. And uh, I would love to give that back. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Three questions. Cause I, I gotta go pee. Get out that's of a here. bit. Uh, what's your favorite drink? Favorite drink uh, right now? Water. Cool. What is your preferred time, night or day? Day. What's your pre preferred vegetable that you like to eat? Oh, my preferred vegetable that I like to eat is uh, probably greens. Oh, man. I love me some greens. Yeah. I saw somebody Greens, some beans, potatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> I saw somebody made a collard green taco and it looked good. Oh shit! Yeah, that do sound good. Um, I got three for you. Uh, if you could be any element in the world, what would you be? Water. Let it flow, man. Let it flow. Um, R aliens real or not and why do you believe what you believe uh yes of course because it just makes sense like <laughs> there's a whole bunch of space time uh we are with the, a limitless god creator so i think there is you know we we aliens to somebody so it just makes sense to me and what does freedom mean to James Free? Uh, it means understanding that I am a part of something that's greater than I can even imagine. And all I got to do 
is allow that to flow through me to get whatever I want and need in life. Just understanding all I got to do is allow it to flow. That's what's up, man. Shoot. Thank y'all. Well, shit, before, uh, it's going to be a link in the bio uh, mm-hmm. for you to get some free meditations, some workshops, also a link in the bio for you to get one of these healing in real time shirts. Maybe you could get a, uh, my price is my price shirt. Uh, we got some shirts that say dream big because, you know, we want you to follow your dreams. So, you know, whatever speaks to you, you can find it at yannyblue.etsy.com. We thank you all so much for being here. And uh, yeah, this has been Feel Free Conversations. Peace. And as always, feel free to feel free and namaste. Peace, peace, y'all. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. Yeah.